Kondo. The singer pastor in Seoul heals the believers with the power even when they are suffering from incurable diseases and he solved the problems in believers business work or pain thus making them prosper through his powerful prayers. Ukangalia mchungaji wetu mkuu kule Korea Kusini makao makuu ya Manmin anaponya wagonjwa kwa nguvu za Mungu hata kama kuna magonjwa yasiyoponyeka duniani na tena natatua shida za waumini kama ni kibiashara kama ni kazi zao au uchungo wote ambao wako nao na anafanikisha maisha yao kwa nguvu za Mungu. We the power that he received through countless prayers and fasting he still manifest the countless miracles and signs are written in the Bible in our lives allowing us to experience the power of God. Na ndio maana kwa nguvu ambazo alipokea kutoka kwa Mungu kupitia maombi yake ya bidii miaka mingi na tena kwa kufunga mara mingi kwa nguvu zile mpaka wa leo anazidi kutimiza miujiza na ishara mingi kama vile maandiko katika Biblia tunaziona katika maisha yetu na imeturuhusu tushuhudie nguvu za Mungu. In Exodus chapter 15 Moses led the Israelites across the Red Sea and arrived at Mara after a three day journey. Kwenye sura ya 15 ya kitabu cha kutoka tunapata Musa alipoongoza Waisraeli wavuke bahari ya Shamu baada ya safari ya siku tatu akafika kule Mara. However when the water became bitter and undrinkable Moses prayed and changed the bitter water into sweet water so that the Israelites could drink to their heart's content. Hata hivyo walipofika Mara wakapata maji ni machungu hayanyweki na pale Musa akaomba na kubadilisha maji machungu yakawa maji matamu yanayonyweka na hivi Waisraeli waliweza kunywa maji yale mpaka watosheke. In the year 2000 When our shepherd prayed at the request of Buan Mame Brain Church located on an island in the southern sea of Korea the sea water was transformed into sweet and drinkable water Tukio lile lile lilitendeka katika mwaka wa 2000 wakati kanisa letu la Muan kanisa la tawi la Muan kule Korea ni Korea Kusini kwenye kisiwa cha bahari walitisha maombi ya mchungaji ndio kwamba maji machungu yabadilishwe kwa matamu baada ya kuomba kwa mchungaji yalibadilishwa yakawa maji matamu Haleluya Amen It was a dream evening meeting of the 2013 Mamen Summer Retreat. Siku moja mwaka wa 2013 kwenye mkutano wa Manmin Summer Retreat wakati wa jioni as many believers gathered outdoor for worship it began raining. Wakati waumini wengi walikusanyika nje si ndani ya hekalu lakini nje kwenye uwanja ndio kwamba anze mkutano kukaanza kunyesha. Our shepherd prayed and commanded to rain to stop. Na yeye mchungaji wetu pale akaomba na kuamrisha mvua isimame. Despite everyone responding with amen, they waited breathlessly to see if the rain would stop. Na hata kama kila mtu alisema amina alipokuwa naomba, lakini kwa kweli kweli wengi wao walikuwa nangojea kwa shauku, kwa wasiwasi wakikaza pumzi zao wangoje mvua kweli itasimama. In less than a minute a hole was opened in the center of the rain cloud and three the blue sky and twinkling stars were visible and God performed an unforgettable and moving miracle of stopping the rain with his power. Lakini hata dakika moja pekee haikuisha mara moja tu kama shimo hivi ikafunguka katikati ya anga na mawingi yakaondoka kukawa na anga rangi ya buluu na kisha mvua ikasimama papo hapo na hivyo basi tukio ambalo haliwezi kusaulika la kuweza kusimamisha mvua lilitendeka hivi kwa nguvu za Mungu Haleluya Amen The shepherd and the acting singer pastor are still performing countless miracles and signs with the gospel of holiness and power not only appearing souls around the world 
but also leading the lives of believers to wealth and prosperity. Na tukangalia hadi wa leo mchungaji wetu mkuu na acting senior pastor bado wanaonyesha miujiza na ishara mingi zisizohesabika na kupitia injili ya utakaso na nguvu za Mungu achana na kuamsha tu nafsi waokoke duniani zaidi ya hiyo pia wanasaidia maisha ya waumini wafanikiwe katika afya katika mali na kufanikiwa maisha to celebrate its 23rd founding anniversary Nairobi Mamen Church is planning to open the Nairobi Mamen Academy to help the lives of believers. Na basi tunaposherekea miaka 23 anniversary ya Nairobi Mamen Church habari njema iko hapa ya kwamba kanisa letu tunaanzisha academy ya Nairobi Mamen ambayo itasaidia maisha ya waumini. In particular, in order to give hope and courage to the youth, especially young believers, we plan to open many specialized classes, starting with the Bible study classes. Nanika ongea kwa kina zaidi kusu Nairobi Manmin Academy, tunalenga kuwapa tumaini na himizo kwa vijana, na si vijana tu sana sana waumini vijana ndio kwamba tupange kufungua madarasa mbalimbali mbali, madarasa na masomo ya kimaalum lakini tutaanza kwanza na masomo ya biblia for example we plan to open various classes according to the need such as clothing design sewing cloth manufacturing korean classes other language classes computer classes, media broadcasting classes, architectural technology classes, automobile related classes, etc. Kwa mfano tu ni kataja baadhi ya masomo ambayo tuteza kutoa ni kama vile pengine kutengeneza nguo, kushona, madarasi ya kusoma lugha ya korea na lugha zingine za kima taifa, darasa za kompyuta, ama pengine uh, vyombo vya habari, ama pengine teknolojia ya ujenzi, na vitu kama vile. The purpose is to... Tokuza mgu kwa makofi vizuri. Asante sana. Asante. The purpose is to provide the believers, especially young people, with the opportunity to hope and success to acquire uh, knowledge and develop skills so that they can become people necessarily needed in this society and become warriors of faith who will develop this country. Na kusudi kubwa la manmin academy hapa sana sana kwa vijana ni kuwapa fursa ya matumaini na mafanikio ndio kwamba wapate masomo zaidi uwezo zaidi tajriba zaidi na kwa kupitia ile watakuwa watu wa muhimu katika jamii ambao watahitajika sana na zaidi ya hiyo watakuwa mashujaa wa imani ambao wataendelesha taifa letu lipande kazi juu Tatali the last church that we stood the first church is your church that is praised by all the people and saves countless souls. Ya tatu, ndiyo kwamba tuwe kanisa la muisho ambalo litarejesha kanisa la kwanza. Ime tupasa tuwe kanisa ambalo watu wengi wanalisifu na kanisa ambalo linaokoa nafsi wengi wasiwe sabika. Verse 47 of today's scripture say, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord was adding to the number of day by day those who were being saved. Mustari wa 47 katika somo la leo linasema wakimsifu Mungu na kuwapendeza watu wote kila siku Bwana akiliongeza kanisa wale waliokuwa wakiokolewa. And the believers of the first church were Priest by all the people. Waumini katika kanisa la kwanza walisifiwa na watu wote. Yani walipendeza watu wote. Because of this, God was pleased and blessed them 
region expo, ex, uh, expo, expo, uh, exponential, uh, exponential increase in the number of believers being saved. Na kwa sababu walipendeza watu wote, hiyo nayo ikampendeza Mungu, na ye Mungu akawabariki kwa kuwaongezea idadi ya watu waliokuwa kiokoka na ilizidi kuongezeka tu. In Acts chapter 11 verse 28, it is said that Apostle Paul and Barnabas total large crowd in Antioch and their disciples were called Christians. Angalia kwenye matendo ya mitume 11 mstari wa 26 inasemekana ya kwamba mtume Paulo na Barnaba walifunza kundi kubwa la watu kule Antioch na hao watu kuanzia hiyo siku walikuwa wanafunzi wao na wakaitwa Wakristo. Who or what is a Christian? Nikauliza ni nini na ni nani anaitwa Mkristo? It means the one who belongs to Christ. Mkristo inamaanisha mtu ambaye ni wa Kristo. If you add the suffix an or ian to the end of a country name such as Korean, Kenyan or Indian, you become a member of that particular country. Kwa mfano, chukua jina la taifa lolote, liwe ni Korea, Kenya, India, taifa lolote lile, kama ni Kiingereza, chukua herufi AN na IAN na kama ni Swahili, chukua herufi M. Ndipo uteza kupata huyo mtu ni mtu aina gani na ni wa taifa gani. Christian obtained by adding IAN to Christ means a person who belong to Christ. A person who lives with the spirit of Christ, a person who lives like Christ, that is a sample of Jesus. Sasa neno mkristo, Christian, kingereza, Christ, na ungeza IAN, na swahili ni m na kristo, upate mkristo, inamanisha mtu ambaye ni wa kristo. Mtu ambaye naishi akifuata roho ya kristo. Mtu ambaye naishi kama kristo. Na basi ni mfano wa kristo. When the believers living in Antioch was seen changing and living like Christ, the people around them gave them the name Christian. Sasa, watu waliokuwa karibu na Antioch, Walipo tazama waumini wa kanisa la Antioki. Walina jinsi hawa watu, maisha yao mebadilika na wanishi kama kristo. Ndiyo mana wale watu wenye wetu wakanza kuwaita wale watu wa kristo. Many people heard the word of God, repented and accepted Jesus as their savior and with the help of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit was born in their lives. Na kutokana na hayo, watu wengi walikuja kusikiliza neno la mungu, watu wakatubu, wakamkubali isu kama mkombozi wa wakipeke, na kwa msada wa romta katifu, matunda ya romta katifu lizaliwa katika maisha yao. In this way, people changed and their lives changed, becoming a moral and ethical example for the society. Na kwa namna kama hiyo, watu walibadilisha maisha yao sana na basi maisha yao ikawa ni kielelezo cha maadili katika jamii. By obeying the law and being truthful, they impressed many people and as the scripture says today, they were praised by all the people and many people became attracted to the church so the number of people who were being saved Encouraged. Na basi wao kwa kuti sheria zote na kuwa watu wenye ukweli kwa kufanya tu vile walipendeza watu waliokuwa pale karibu na kutokana na hiyo kama vile ndiko lemesema leo hii walisifiwa walipendeza watu wote na wale watu waliopendezwa nao wenyewe walijileta kanisani na idadi ya wale waliokolewa iliongezeka. As we go one more step further I hope that just as the Korean church Save the Korea. Neither of the church will become a church that will save this region and Kenya. Na basi, ningependa tuchukue hatuwa moja zaidi ya pale tuko sasa. Nikitumai ya kwamba, kama vile tu kanisa la Korea, liliweza kuokua taifa la Korea. Basi vile vile, Nairobi Manmin Church, liwe kanisa mbalo litaokua eneo hili na Kenya nzima. Unfortunately, Korea is divided into two 
countries. Lakini bahati mbaya Korea imegawanyika mataifa mawili. Korea, South Korea is a liberal democratic country and North Korea is a communist country. Korea Kusini ni taifa la demokrasia yenye uwazi, lakini Korea Kaskazini ni taifa la ucommunist. It is not an exaggeration to say that North Korea is the poorest and most miserable country in the world. Na sitakuwa naongeza chumvi nikisema ya kwamba Korea Kaskazini ndio taifa maskini zaidi duniani na ndio taifa iko na mashida mingi duniani. Although South Korea is a small country, it is one of the world's top 10 economies. Hata kama Korea Kusini ni taifa ndogo, lakini ni moja wapo kati ya mataifa kumi ya kwanza yanayoongoza katika uchumi. Both South Korea and North Korea start out as very poor and unstable countries. Lakini tukarudi nyuma kidogo miaka kadhaa iliyopita, Korea Kaskazini na Korea Kusini wote walianza kwa umaskini na hali ambayo haikuwa mzuri. After, but after 40 to 50 years, South Korea became a completely different country. Lakini hesabu ya miaka 40 na 50 baadaye Korea Kusini ikafanyika taifa tofauti kabisa na ya kwanza. South Korea became a completely rich and developed country and North Korea became a completely pitiful and poor country. Na kwa hivyo Korea Kusini ikafanyika taifa tajiri sana, taifa liloendelea sana kinyume na Korea Kaskazini ambayo ilizidi kuzorota kuwa maskini taifa la kuhurumiwa sana. How and why did this happen? Kwa nini na aje hili likatendeka? I think it was because of the rule of the church. Nikidhania ilihusiana na jukumu la kanisa. North Korea was a country of atheists, so they hunted down Christians, killed them, and destroyed their churches. Korea Kaskazini ni taifa na lilikuwa taifa ambalo lilikuwa linapinga Mungu na basi walikuwa naenda wakitafuta wa Kristo wanawaandama na kuwaua na kuharibu makanisa In South Korea the church has experienced a remarkable revival that is difficult to find in any other country in the world and Christians have a contributed greatly to creating a healthy society and a strong nation through exemplary activities in all walks of life, including politics, including economy, including society and education. Amen. Korea Kusini, Pale Korea Kusini, Kanisa, Jumuiya ya Kanisa, imeshudia uamusho na ufufuo mkubwa sana ambao ni vigumu sana upate kwenye taifa lingine na wakristo pale wamechangia pakubwa katika taifa nzima kuwa na afya taifa kuwa lenye nguvu likuwa kwenye mstari wa mbele kama kielelezo katika nyanja zote za maisha iwe ni siasa iwe ni uchumi kijamii hata masomo God's blessing has come to South Korea and God's curse has come to North Korea. Ndio maana ukiangalia mwisho mwisho utaona baraka za Mungu zimeshuka Korea Kusini lakini laana za Mungu zimeshukia Korea Kaskazini. We believe that the members of Nairobi Mammon Church will be filled with the word of God and the Holy Spirit be transformed and play a big role in creating a healthier society and more developed Kenya by being active in all walks Amen. of life. Amen. Amen. Basi tunamini washirika washirika wote wa kanisa la Nairobi Manmin mujazwe na neno la Mungu, mujazwe na Roho Mtakatifu, mubadilike na mufanye jukumu la muhimu zaidi katika kutengeneza jamii yenye afya, jamii iliyoendelea sana hapa Kenya na muweze kuwa watu wenye bidii katika nyanja zote za maisha. And this is because Nairobi Morning Church is a church 
where the blood of martyrs flows. Nasema vile ni kwa sababu kanisa la Nairobi manmini kanisa ambapo kumekuwa na damu zilizotiririka, damu za wale waliojitoa kufa kifo kitakatifu. A long time ago our late missionary David Lee shed many smattered blood while preaching the gospel of holiness in Korea region uh, uh, Kibera in Kibera region and was uh, eventually called by God. Muda mrefu mrefu liopita kitambo tulikuwa na missionary mmoja marehemu David Lee ambaye alimwaga damu yake na kafa kifo kitakatifu alipokuwa kwenye eneo la Kibera akihubiri njili ya utakaso na hatimaye aliitwa na Mungu. Of course Bishop Myungjong was called by God graciously without any long term illness but I think it is not an exaggeration to call him a martyr because he sacrificed his entire life for the members of Nairobi Mammon Church. Amen. Na bila shaka nikaongea kuhusu askofu Myong Ho Chong ambaye aliitwa na Mungu kwa neema na si ati aligonjeka muda mrefu lakini nikiwazia si kutia chumvi nikisema ya kwamba alikufa kifo kitakatifu kwa sababu maisha yake yote alijitoa kwa washirika kwa upendo kwa ajili ya kanisa la Nairobi Manmin Church. Uh, there are four major civilizations in the world. Ukaangalia duniani kuna maendeleo ya binadamu kubwa zaidi nne. These are Egyptian civilization Mesopotamian civilization, Indian civilization and Yellow River civilization. Maendeleo hayo ya binadamu ya kwanza ni kule Misri, ingine ni Mesopotamia, ingine ni kule India na ingine ni kwenye mto wa manjano Yellow River. What they have in common is that they have a large river flowing through them. Ambacho kinafananisha maendeleo haya ya binadamu mane ni kwamba yote utapata mto mkubwa unatiririka katikati pale for the egyptian civilization is the nile river for the mesopotamian civilization is the tigris and euphrates rivers for the indian civilization is the indus ganga rivers and for the yellow river civilization is the yellow river in china nikaongea ama ni watajie kuhusu mito hiyo mikubwa ambayo ileleta maendeleo ya binadamu kama ni pale Misri ni mto Naeli kama ni pale Mesopotamia ni mto Tigri na Frati na kama ni pale India ni mto Indus na Ganga na kama ni pale uh, China kuna mto Yellow River mto Manjano I am praying for Nairobi Mami Church to become the place of origin or the birth place of revival healing blessing and praise in Africa. Amen. Na mimi naomba maombi yangu ni kwamba kanisa la Nairobi Manmin mufanyike eneo cha eneo ya chanzo cha ufufuo, chanzo cha uponyaji, chanzo cha baraka na chanzo cha neema itakayofunika Afrika nzima. In order to be a birth place, the river must flow. Ndio kwamba uwe chanzo cha kitu fulani lazima mto utiririke pale. When a Jewish feast was about to end, there is a something Jesus said. Wakati sherehe fulani ya Wayahudi ilikuwa na karibia kuisha, kuna jambo Yesu alitamka. It is as recorded in John chapter 7 verse 38. Ni kama vile imenakiliwa kwenye Yohana mtakatifu sura ya saba, mstari wa 38 na 39 He who believes in me as the scripture said from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water Inasema yeyote aniaminie mimi kama maandiko yasemavyo vijito vya maji ya uzima vitatiririka ndani yake we must allow the living water of the Holy Spirit overflowing from our hearts to become a river and to overflow our Nabi Mami Church with the river of revival, the river of grace, the river of healing, 
and the river of blessings. Amen. Lazima turuhusu maji ya uzima ya Roho Mtakatifu ibubujike na itiririke katika mioyo yetu ndio kwamba mioyo yetu ifanyike kuwa mto ambao unatiririka umebubujika hapa Nairobi Manmin Church Nairobi Manmin Church ifanyike mto wa ufufuo mto wa neema mto wa uponyaji na mto wa baraka If we create a large and wide spiritual river here with the help of the Holy Spirit Many fish will follow the flow of the river and swim into our church. Na kwa namna hiyo tukatengeneza muto wa kiroho mkubwa na mpana zaidi kwa msaada wa Roho Mtakatifu pale ndipo utapata samaki wengi watafuata mto huo na watapata wanajipata ndani ya manmin. If this happens our church will become the birth of place of revival overflowing with the holy spirit healing and blessings and become a church that conquers all of africa with the gospel of holiness and the power of our shepherd na jambo hilo likatendeka kanisa letu litafanyika chanzo cha ufufuo chanzo cha uamsho na kutakuwa na mbubujiko na mtiririko wa roho mtakatifu mwenyewe mtiririko wa baraka mtiririko wa uponyaji na kanisa lili litatawala afrika nzima kwa injili ya utakaso na kwa nguvu za mchungaji mkuu In 2 Kings chapter 3 there's a story of a war between Israel and Moab. Kwenye wafalme wa pili sura ya tatu, tunapata hadithi kuhusu vita kati ya Israel na Moab. It's the story of how God made the river flow of Israel and thus they won. Ni hadithi ambayo inaonyesha jinsi gani Mungu alifanya mto utiririke ndani ya Israel na kwa kufanya vile alifanya waisraeli wa shinde vita when the king of israel who was at a disadvantage to to the strength of moab as the prophet elisha how to win prophet elisha answered as recorded in second kings chapter 3 verse 16 to 17. Ni wakati ambapo mfalme wa Israel kwa sababu alikuwa amepungukiwa na uwezo na uzito kwa sababu uzito na uwezo wa Moab ilikuwa kubwa zaidi sasa mfalme wa Israel akauliza nabii Elisha jinsi gani atafanya ndio kwamba washinde na yeye nabii Elisha kamjibu kama vile imenakiliwa kwenye wafalme wa pili sura ya tatu mstari wa 16 na 17. He says thus says the Lord make this valley full of trenches na yeye nabii elisha akamjibu mfalme kumwambia hivi hivi ndivyo asema bwana chimbeni bonde hili lijae mahandaki ya maji for to says the lord you shall not see wind nor shall you see wind yet that valley shall be filled with water so that you shall drink both you and your cattle and your beasts kwa kuwa hivi ndivyo asemavyo Bwana hamtaona upepo wala mvua lakini bonde hili litajaa maji nanyi pamoja na ngombe wenu na wanyama wenu wengine mtakunywa as elisha said to king dug many trenches in the valley and the water flowed from adam filling the land with water na kama vile tu nabii elisha alimwagiza mfalme aliti akachimba mahandaki kwenye bonde lile na maji yakaanza kutiririka kutoka edomu na yakajaza nchi yote when the enemy moabites woke up the next morning the water in the israel camp looked red due to reflecting the sunlight so they mistakenly thought it was blood na wakati maadui kwenye taifa la Moabu waliamka asubuhi iliyofuata wakapata kwenye kambi ya Israel kumejaa maji mengi na maji rangi yake ni nyekundu kutokana na jinsi jua ilikuwa inaleta nuru na hivyo basi ikawadanganya ya kwamba waisraeli wamejazwa na damu the story goes that the enemy's soldiers misunderstand that the israelites had killed each other and were full of blood so they attacked unreasonably but were defeated by an israeli 
ambush. Na hadithi inasema ya kwamba wale maadui, maskari wa, wa adui walielewa vibaya, walijidanganya ya kwamba hawa wa Israeli wamejiua wenyewe ndio maana damu iko mingi kwenye ardhi yao na basi wakienda tu kwa shambulia bila kujipanga vizuri badala yake walipigwa vibaya na Waisraeli. Just as Israel won by digging many streams and turning them into large rivers our night we men holy church will also achieve a victory by creating a large river of the holy spirit here and becoming a place of a revival healing and blessings na kama vile tu taifa la israel walipata ushindi kwa kuchimba vijito vya maji na kuvigeuza kuwa mito mikubwa vile vile kanisa la Nairobi Manmin Holiness Church tutatimiza ushindi kwa kutengeneza mto mkubwa wa Roho Mtakatifu mtu ambao utakuwa chanzo cha ufufuo chanzo cha baraka na chanzo cha uponyaji Already at Nairobi Manmin Church many believers are praying forward with the tears and the river of living water of the Holy Spirit is overflowing na tayari hiyo inaonekana hapa Nairobi Manmin Church kwa sababu kuna waumini wengi ambao wamejikaza sana katika maombi ya bidii hata kwa machozi na hivyo basi kuna mto mkubwa wa maji ya uzima ya Roho Mtakatifu ambayo inatiririka hapa in addition the tears of our beloved shepherd who prays for us are flowing like a river na zaidi ya hiyo ni kwamba machozi ya mchungaji wetu mkuu mpendwa ambaye anatuombea sisi machozi yake yanatiririka kama mto in additionally the precious blood of the lord's cross flows like a river na hata zaidi ya hiyo damu tamana ya bwana wetu inatiririka kama mto conclusion Let's, let's say there are different kinds of bottles. Hebu tuseme kuna viupa, chupa, chupa aina mingi. These bottles are all the same in size and thickness of the bottle mouth. Na viupa vyote viko na ukubwa ule ule kama ni unene wa mdomo wake ama ukubwa wake vile ilivyo. So, how can a bottle hold more water? then the other bottles na sasa viupa hivi moja itabeba maji mingi kuliko viupa vingine aje it's about deepening the depth basi tahusiana na kina cha chupa urefu wa chupa the deeper the bottle the more water it can hold chupa kikazidi kwa kina na urefu kitabeba maji zaidi ya viupa vingine Mammen church is your church with greater depth. Na kanisa la Manmin ni kanisa ambalo liko na kina kirefu. The scope of teaching the Bible is the same as that of other denominations and churches. Upana ukubwa wa kufunza neno la Mungu kwenye Biblia ni sawa na madini mengine na makanisa mengine yanatoshana. We teach the words of the 66 books of the Bible. Ni kwa sababu hata sisi tunafunza maneno yaliyoko katika vitabu 66 vya Biblia. However, the depth of the word is different. Hata hivyo, ambacho ni tofauti ni kina cha neno, ukubwa wa neno. There is a depth in the words. Kuna kina kirefu cha maneno. There is a man in church that teaches the spiritual words more deeply. Yaani inamaanisha Kanisa la Manmin linafunza maneno ya kiroho kwa kina kikubwa zaidi. There's a depth in ability and the depth of ability varies. Na tukaongea kuhusu uwezo, uwezo kuna kuwa na kina cha uwezo na kina cha uwezo ni tofauti na kina kingine cha uwezo. This refers to power. Na pale ndipo tunaongea kuhusu nguvu. The reason man man church teaches the bible in such a deep way exercised its power is to help other believers have a true heart and complete faith so that they can go beyond simply being saved and enter new jerusalem a better heavenly dwelling place where the throne of god the father is 
sababu kubwa ya kanisa la Madmin kufunza Biblia kwa kina zaidi na kuonyesha nguvu za Mungu kwa kina zaidi ni kusaidia waumini wote wapate mioyo ya kweli imani timilifu ndio kwamba wasifikie tu kuokolewa tu peke yake wafikie kuhitimu kuingia Yerusalemu mpya ambayo ndio sehemu bora zaidi katika ufalme wa Mungu pale ambapo kuna kiti cha enzi cha Mungu Baba It sounds like the voice of our shepherd saying let's go to New Jerusalem Let's all go together. Come with me to New Jerusalem. Na basi nikasema vile nikana kwamba tunasikia sauti ya mchungaji mkuu akituambia twendeni pamoja Yerusalemu mpya twendeni pamoja kila mtu muambatane nami pamoja twende Yerusalemu mpya. Hallelujah almighty father god of love please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now show your works to transcend space and time on those who are receiving this prayer around the world give them faith and drive away negative thoughts and doubts and drive away all tests and trials from head to toe all in trails joints nerves tissues and cells whatever the sick part may be burn them with the fire of the holy spirit and with the original light in the name of jesus christ i command the enemy devil and satan all diseases germs and viruses and infirmities go away may the light come drive away all endemic diseases such as malaria all contagious diseases such as cold flu and fever go away protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents and fix their broken bones restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away and let there be no scar left be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions poisoning and substance abuse Give him the blessing of conception. May you receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air and evil forces of darkness, go away. And their servants also go away. Father God, give them strength to cry out in prayer and to cast off sin and to become sanctified. As their soul prosper, let all things go well with them, let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the firewall of the Holy Spirit, with the heavenly hosts and angels and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their family, workplace and business. Give students wisdom and understanding and give them fervent passion to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from the worldly things and let them love Father God all the more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or whatever they may do, let them do it all for the glory of Father God. Let them say, I met God, I experienced God, I received answers and blessings. Let them testify with their lips like this. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray.